Hello, hello, hello. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, boo. Hey. I'm Maria Kanam, the creator of The Curvy Fashionista, and we're back with our Speaking of Curves Facebook Live series. Every week, Tuesday and Thursday, um, at noon, we do a interview with a plus-size business owner, influencer, um, someone who's doing things in the community, in the industry, especially now. Like, you know, we are dead set in the middle of, like, this pandemic and we're trying to figure out how to navigate but what's really important is that we support these businesses um, through it all right we support these businesses we're here to help we're here to support we're here to have fun and so today we have a fun guest now this guest I have known them for a minute they have gone they have uh, attended some of my events they have really grown as a blogger influencer now turned entrepreneur they are now a business owner they run a whole business with beauty right and so we talk about you know different ways to support and different types of uh influencers different types of business owners and it's really important that you guys get to meet all of them so as you're tuning in we want you to say hello let us know where you're tuning in from don't be afraid to say hi if you have questions for our guests my computer is right here, so I'm seeing your questions, I'm seeing your comments. Let's discuss, let's talk, and um, please welcome Alicia Young. You may know her as APY Blog. Um, hello, Alicia. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much for joining. How's your day going? Pretty good. It's pretty laid back and relaxed. No complaints so far. Well, I mean, first of all, can we just get into like this, this face, honey? Like your, your, I love this, like, I don't know what color it is. It's like auburn-ish, like your fro, a, like it's your a ponytail. Mixture. <clears throat> it's it what? was a dye job gone wrong that I just, you know, Stop remixed. Stop it, really? <clears throat> well, you made it It was it supposed work. to be like honey blonde and really my hair is really like jet black. So it didn't take the first time. So I used a different shade of blonde on top of the other brownish blonde and we got this so well <laughs> this honey, it works it Thank works you. and i mean i love this color you you didn't have to tell me that it was an accident yeah it was, was a beautiful you know, one look, here we are I, i'll take it looks good to me right work it out so all right so i introduced you as a blogger so how long have you been blogging um since 2006 so Ooh. Yeah, it's been that long. Uh, we're at, what, 13 years, 14 years, somewhere in there. Wow. Um, Get yeah. it? Get it? Okay, okay. So, um, in this journey for you, have you been consistent? Has, like, what have you learned about yourself? Because I think a lot of times, like, you know, especially those who started so early, it was really about, like, just a free flow of thoughts. So, to now... Yeah. Like what, what has your, how, how has your blog changed from 2006 to today? Basically. Yeah. Go, let's start with that one. I, I got my start on MySpace blogging. So it was definitely just like, you know, sharing my, MySpace yeah, is MySpace trending show, today on Twitter. I'm giving y'all my age. Can you guess? Um, and I didn't, you know, I started out doing my poetry there and then, you know, it kind of escalated to me sharing my thoughts. And then I think I was introduced to Tumblr. So I was on Tumblr for years, anonymously though, like there was no face to it. I was just sharing my thoughts and I had, you know, managed to build quite a following. And then at some point that shifted to like Blogspot, I think. And I, I started on Blogspot. I did. <laughs> and then I didn't like, then I didn't really like the platform that much. And that's how I got introduced to WordPress, probably in like 2010, 2011. And I just stayed there. Um, and so initially when I was blogging again, it was kind of anonymous. Um, so really I dedicated my blogging to coping with depression. Um, I was sharing my mental health journey. Um, and as I got older, cause I was probably like 21 or so, 20 when I first started blogging. So as I got older and my life changed and shifted and I was going through things, I started to include more things. So then I had set up like separate blogs. Like I had a parenting blog and then I had, <laughs> you know, the depression blog. And then it was like, 
Well, why don't I just merge all these things together? These are all a reflection of me. Instead of having separate platforms, let me just combine them all under AP Young, which is my name by the time I got married in 09. So in 2014, I started the AP Young blog website. Um, so I just merged all my blogs together and was just like, you guys are gonna get it all, whether it's mental health, whether it's marriage, parenting, or fashion, which came far later in the game, probably not till like 2016, 2017. Um, and I've just been at it, just blogging my life, basically. And so when did you take the leap to, cause you have a cosmetics line now. Yes. So yes. when did you take the leap? By the way, I am wearing her eyeshadow and a very yes. small highlight, very, very subtle. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. It's a little bit. No, we see it. It's, it's a shiny. little bit, a little highlight. But when did you start? And what made you start to like launch a, a, a cosmetics line? It was really your fault, um, no, and in a good way. So 2017 was my first time going to any plus event, which was TCF. And, you know, I had never gone before. And so I get this press pass. And I'm like, oh, I'm excited. This is great. And so people, you know, my girlfriends are like, so, you know, you going to do makeup? Are you going to get this together? Because prior to this, I did not do makeup. And I had my makeup done like once or twice, once for my mom's wedding and once for my maternity shoot. And I'm like, it didn't even dawn on me like, oh, this is a big event where people take pictures. I need to do my makeup. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. And God, it was awful. So by like an hour at the event, like my face was like glistening. I didn't know anything about setting powder. I didn't know anything about, you know, contouring, concealing, none of that stuff. I didn't even know how to apply lashes properly. I and still don't know how I, to apply lashes, girl. You will not catch me trying to do some lash. Listen, I, I was, I was horrible at it. And what ended up happening was after I saw the pictures, there were so many great pictures, but all I could look at was like, oh my God, your face is melting. So I started looking at YouTube and started watching like Jackie Ina and Ella Ray and Alyssa Ashley. Um, and there's more that I can't think of off the top of my head and just started teaching myself because I'm okay. like, I want to be beat when I step out the door to go do something special. Right. Um, and in that process, I really realized the art of putting on makeup, the process is therapeutic to me, right? Like it calms my nerves. So wait, wait, wait. I can go Putting on makeup for you calms your nerves. It does. It's, I, I promise you, like, I will come in my, like, my workspace. I have a little studio in my house. I will come in here, turn my music on, and just create. It's like playing in paint, basically, except on my face. And okay. so in that process of learning and teaching myself, you know, you're shopping for products and you never know what you're gonna get until you get it, right? It's like- That's real. This could be a good product, this could be a bad one. You try to read reviews. Um, I'm really budget savvy type of person, like as much as I wanna support like bigger brands, like sometimes buying foundation or things that are astronomically priced, I'm just like, I can't do it. I wish the things that I wanted were like a little more for my budget. So that's what got me thinking about a cosmetic line. I'm like, if I could create a line that was budget friendly, but still give people the quality that they're looking for, that would be really dope. So probably a year before I left my job, um, because I came out because of a disability, like the wheels were turning in my head. So wait, 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 wait. You were about to go into disability and you used a, a, a life situation. Mm-hmm. And you started thinking, you started being a little bit more forward thinking about what you could do, how you could do it, and how you could leverage it for your own. So you took your love of and your passion of makeup, you took knowing that you're about to go on disability, and you leverage those two, because that's a pivot, right? So you yeah. leverage this pivot to launch your own cosmetic line. Yes. Okay, girl, get it. So. Now we're, what year did this launch? It launched last year in May. I got my license in February. 
um, and everything was done, you know, behind the scenes in February, but I didn't launch until May, um, mostly because it was like spring, summer months. So I'm like, I can do the palette that I wanted to release, which was the Essential Collection. And the thought behind that is the first thing out of my collection I wanted to launch, I wanted it to be like, the essentials, like you have everything you need to give you a complete glam or a neutral look if you need it. What do they call um, it? Soft it's... glam? Yeah, soft glam. Soft glam, neutral glam, um, natural glam, whatever it's called. You can get it all out of this palette, out of this highlighter, and out of these lipsticks because I only initially dropped nudes, like the nude lipstick first. Um, and so I just... I went for it. Like my husband literally, who is my right hand for everything, he was just like, why not? You know, I was thinking of all the reasons, you know, no. well, why I shouldn't, um, that, you know, crayon cases out and, you know, there's this, there's the lip bar, there's so many different brands. Like, I don't want to seem like I'm riding this wave. Like, and he's just like, but why not? <laughs> you know, right. do you think you can do this? Do you think you're capable? So I just was like, I got nothing else better to do with my time. Sure, why not? Right. Let's do it. So you are just hitting a year anniversary. Yeah. Oh, you just hit a year anniversary of your of your. So congratulations. Thank you. So you have your blog. You have this cosmetic line. Now, one of the things you mentioned is you talk about your disability that you were you went out on disability. Do yeah. can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so in 2017, I got diagnosed with um, osteoarthritis and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, one is a thyroid disease, the other is a is arthritis in my hip that actually I found out I had something called hip dysplasia um, that resulted in arthritis expediting. And the thyroid disease also creates inflammation in the joints and thyroid, I mean, arthritis in other joints of the body. So it was just to the point where I was not in a place where I understood my illness. Um, I didn't have a handle on it. M medicine wise, there wasn't a handle on it. And it was just so taxing on my body. Um, going back and forth to work, walking was hurting me. I wasn't ready to get a cane yet or a rollator or any of those things because mentally I couldn't catch up to my body and what my body was saying. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then like I put on like 80 pounds in a very short amount of time, like I was gaining weight. It was just so many things happening at once with my body and I felt like an absolute stranger in my own body. And I've been a working woman since I was 14. <laughs> so the idea of coming out of work, the idea of not contributing to my household or my family was like blowing my mind. Um, so I went through a really heavy depressive episode for like two years probably, and probably didn't really start to see the light of day till last year towards the end of the year. And it's been a struggle um, to adapt and adjust to, hey, you know, I can't do things the way that I used to. My mobility has now changed. Mm -hmm. um, my access to things has now changed and I can't go into my full-time job that I actually liked. You know, I didn't have a problem with my job. I liked what I did, so it was hard. So now that so because and the only reason why i ask so for those of you guys who are watching i'm here with ap young um blogger turned entrepreneur she now has recently launched her cosmetic line and we're talking about how life is kind of when life gives you lemons you make um lemon drops not lemonade but lemon drops maybe was martinis oh lemon martinis, martinis. <laughs> okay girl martini <laughs> and we're talking about her pivot and these are some of the things that she talks about on her blog apyoung.com right apyoungblog.com. Yep. apyoungblog.com. So she talks about like this, these, these, this journey, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to have her on, is because oftentimes we have like life issues that still like we learn kind of how to navigate, or we're still learning how to navigate. And you are very transparent in this, in your journey. Yeah. And I remember, I think it was last year, maybe I think last year you had gotten. You came to the expo in, um, tell me, because you, you were so hyped oh, yeah. about this. That's what you're talking about. I had my scooter around. So um, I knew that the expo was a lot of walking just from having gone previously. And the last year that I had been there, I was actually on a panel there. And I was so burnt out from just the walk. 
to the panel room and I missed the whole first day of the expo because I was just in so much pain. Like I had to just sit in the lobby. Um, and my husband was actually in the fashion show that I didn't get to see him walk. And I was so upset because of how poorly my body felt. And at that time I was using a cane, but I really needed a rollator and didn't know it yet. Um, and really needed a mobility aid and was not prepared in my mind to use it yet. So fast forward. To well, the, let the me ask you, let me ask you real quick. When you say you weren't prepared, is that because you had that kind of like a pre predisposed or an assumption or you assigned yes, some kind of, um, it felt like a, it was admitting failure to myself and B it was definitely like, I don't want to be the fat woman in the scooter. Like I know what people say about us when they see big people. I know what they think when they see a fat disabled person, they automatically assume you are disabled because of your weight. And I did not want to feed that stereotype. So I fought as long as I could to avoid using okay. a scooter, even in the market market. Like I would go to Walmart and my husband would be like, get in the scooter, Alicia. No, I would like tough it out with the cart and cry by the time I was getting in the car because I was so wrapped up in, I don't want to be that fat person. Okay. Um, so last year, like prior to the expo, like I told my husband, like, I'm just going to do it. Like, I can't show up for my audience if I'm not willing to show up honestly for myself oh, and that's real. have a huge chronic illness and disability audience that started to follow me after I started sharing this journey. So I reached out to Scoot Around um, and pitched to them and said, hey, listen, I'm going to this expo. It's, you know, renowned. Check it out. Like gave up the information and then said, um, you know, I need a scooter. Would you guys like to partner with me for this? And they jumped on it. They were like, yeah, absolutely. How many days do you need it for? Here's how it works. We'll deliver it to you. You tell us what you need and, you know, go for it. And they told me the conditions of what they needed me to do. So I showed up and I was so nervous driving like to the venue. We parked, you know, a little bit down the street and it was my first time. <laughs> on a scooter in public outside of like Walmart. So I felt so exposed and so vulnerable, like heading to the hotel, but in the same breath, I felt really liberated because I wasn't in pain. I wasn't having to worry about, I got to stop here so I can take a break on my hip. Like it allowed me to enjoy everything. Let me in tell a way you, that I remember, I, I remember you were radiating. You were so geeked. You were so you. hyped. Like, you're like it, you felt you're you were so excited about this uh, about having this opportunity and it aided in your experiences and then you were also even like nobody looked down at you with, by using yeah. it if anything some people were like girl where's that from <laughs> right yeah and more people reached out like i saw you and your scooter and I just want to tell you, like, I've been so hesitant. I had one woman, I love her to death. She went on her cruise and she ended up renting a scooter around. And she's like, you know, could you tell me the information where you got it from? And I was like, yeah, like, of course, because there's so many of us in that headspace. Um, you know, you the perception. Anytime you exist in a large body, you already know what comes with that, right? Like, you already know. People already make assumptions. So when you're dealing with something that incapacitates you physically it plays tricks on your mind and it's a really hard road to go to try to really decide I'm still worthy and I still deserve to enjoy things. There's a, there's a sense of self pummeling almost that you're like, did I do this to myself? Is this my fault? You know, you get into your head and you get really stuck there. And I'm just like, I'm still young. I want to do things. I want to go out like, cause I had turned into like a recluse. Like I was just in the house. I wasn't going anywhere. I didn't go to the store anymore. Like, I didn't want to be seen like, and I didn't, and I certainly didn't want to be seen as weak. So for me doing that was like taking my power back. Okay. And that's where I'm at with it now. Now, kudos to you, because I know Thanks. a lot of people are still in that, you know, adjustment and, and transition of self-acceptance regardless of where they are. Um, and regardless of what their goals are. Um, right. 
for you, now we've hit, you know, pandemic, world stop, um, everything paused. How has this affected, if at all, like your mental and your, and your business? Um, it definitely, in the beginning, as everything was unrolling, um, it hit me mentally really tough. Um, I'm already a person who deals with depression. And I, I felt like, oh my goodness, like I'm on this road to, you know, recovery, so to speak, like getting back out of the house and doing things more. And now it's like, you gotta be in the house. And I have a compromised immune system. So I really, you know, with the autoimmune, autoimmune disease, I really can't afford to risk it all, you know right. what I mean? Just to go right. out and go to the stores. But my husband does a lot of the shopping. I do a lot of shopping online. So there is Girl, a- Girl, Amazon Fresh is my best friend. Yeah, listen, it was so frustrating because, you know, my daughter was already homeschooling. So it wasn't that big of a transition for her. But right at the beginning of the pandemic, she was in Connecticut visiting family and she got stuck there um, right up until May. So from February to May, my child was gone, you know, oh and so that was a fearful thing because we didn't know how this was going to unroll. Um, and then, you know, my my second oldest, he's now home being schooled and luckily his school already had virtual schooling. So it wasn't that much of a pivot for him, but it just it felt so dystopian, like to the point where like I wasn't like I forgot I could go outside and get fresh air and sit in the sun and all of those things. To the point, so when I finally decided to step outside of my house and get some fresh air, I'm like, girl, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you're sitting in this house, riding away, essentially, out of fear of the things going on around me. And, you know, of course, I'm worried about my husband, and luckily, they allowed him to start working from home. So it was it was more like a play on my mind. And I'm also in the process of my weight loss surgery journey. So that kind of was delayed in that process because they weren't seeing patients and things like that, and they kind of had to, like, pull it together in terms of how to see us. So that was that was hard for the first couple of months. Um, but I started going to therapy again and was like, I can't sit here and wallow in this. Like, I got to keep it moving. Business-wise, I was approaching my year, and it's a pandemic happening. And, and my mom, people do not care about makeup right now. Like... How and like I had a scale set a sales schedule and I was supposed to go do Power Plus weekend in North Carolina that got canceled. Like I'm like, how am I supposed to market this during a time where you know like people might not necessarily care? Oh girl, about they shopping. They pre- shopping. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, how do I? So what I did was I just observed for a little while. I watched people online. And then I asked people and I ran polls to see like, all right, how do you guys feel about this? Right. Because I I don't want to be tone deaf. Like it's a real thing, like what's Mm -hmm. going on right now. And I, you know, what ended up happening was people were like, look, I still have content to make, you know, I still have to be visual. I still have photographs I'm taking. Um, And I was like, okay, this can work. You know, this can work. So what I just continued to do is put out videos of me and I started utilizing TikTok. And okay. using videos of myself doing makeup looks and I, I went ahead and launched new products that I had lined up and people are still here for it. So I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> you know, so, it's definitely a good thing. So for the products you just launched, can you talk to, so, so real quick, let me pause. For those of you guys who are just tuning in, I'm here with AP Young. Um, she's a blogger turned entrepreneur. She is um, just coming up on her year. She just had her year anniversary for AP APY Cosmetics, right? Am I saying it right? Yes. Yep. And so APY Cosmetics, um, I'm wearing her shadows. Like I I think I have your essential palette. Um, And for her, you know, we're talking about her journey. She's had life pivots. And now like we're here during um, here during the pandemic. And we're talking about like business and life pivots that she's had to make. Um, so as you guys are tuning in, like, you know, I'm following the, com- um, the comments, make sure that you guys are leaving some love, give the hearts as she's sharing her story. Um, and now we're going to kind of switch it over to your, your cosmetic line. So, um, do you have your palette with you? I hope you have it right next to you. Um, sort of, kind of. I totally put her on the spot, like, cause I want people to see. It's always, it's always nearby. Like it's always nearby. So. 
I have two. So this is the essential palette. This was the first one that dropped. And that's this the one I have. For your natural nude glam. So we have a lot of new tones. I'm wearing the brown. I'm wearing the one that brown in the corner. That's the one I'm wearing. <laughs> like this is a great transition color, y'all. So when you're doing the base of your color and you want to transition a brighter color in, use that brown. It's great. Um, and so this is like you can use this for every day. It has shimmers in it. Um, everything about this palette to me was like, if it does not matter what look you're doing, you can use this palette. And it has and then a lot I'll, of color payoff. It's pigmented. Yes, it's very pigmented. Um, and that was a really big deal for me because you know, in in As my brown girls need that color that I've contrast. Some chalky, yeah, pigmented stuff before, but this is really pigmented. And then um, the second palette is the Brilliance palette. And so this is more for your bright colors, you guys. So this uh -oh. is like playing, so these are your oh! bright, you know, like when you, when you, when you're trying to stand out, this is the palette and you can use any of these colors by themselves. But a lot of the people who shop with me are really into like creating looks. There's a young lady on my page, Just Tiff Makeup. She has done some amazing looks with these colors. Like it's like playing in paint. Basically, I need those essential. colors because I'm here for a good yellow on the lid. Do you really? Yes. I need a blue on the lid. Oh, I'm here for colors. Yes, those I are have fun. to send you one. If you want the color, I will definitely send you one. Then I um I also had the essential palette, which Marie is wearing, um, highlighter. So this is for people who may or may not be comfortable playing with highlighter. I'm not. Again. So I was just baby. I was dipping my toe. These are more like your neutral tones, so it's gonna give you a little, little shine. Little you like my Vanna White going up. on, my Vanna. Look at it, and see, it's so perfect that no matter which angle she turns, okay, you're gonna get that glow. And that's the whole thing. Like I wanted this to be a subtle. Like you can go hard with it if, if you want. So I know everybody's idea on highlighter is different, but um, I wanted good product that was going to last, that was going to show up, that was going to be pigmented. So those were the first collections um, that I put together. And of course, I have like a whole line of matte lipsticks. I'm wearing one. This is Mava. Um, and I just dropped liquid highlighter. I'm wearing that today too. Oh, um, liquid so highlighter? Yes. That's fancy. And there's a tutorial on how to use it. So yeah, because I'm not that good with that. Anybody can be good with it. No. If I can, if I can manage, anybody can manage. I promise you. Just watch the video. When when COVID's over, I have to come play and make up with you. Yeah, I would love it because I'm totally not the. I'm totally not the. Um, I used to play a lot in makeup, but then I kind of was just like, I'm not trying to fuss. But now I be seeing all these like looks, and I'm like, how the hell? And like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? So with that being said, like, do me a favor, let us know where folks, like, tell us where folks can support you. So honestly, apyoungblog.com, which is my site, I own that. You know, I love the love on social media, but that is my baby and that's what I own. So if you guys wanna come there, subscribe to it. I don't spam, I do a monthly newsletter. Um, also, you can shop AP Young Beauty right there directly on the site, right at the top. There's a tab that says Shop AP Young Beauty Collection. So it's a one stop shop. And if you guys want to support me, if you like makeup and you enjoy makeup or you know someone who does, refer me, refer my site, come and shop. Um, you know, it's affordable, I promise. I'm not breaking pockets. That's how you guys can support me. Read the blog, subscribe to the blog, and of course, shop the brand. All right. Woot, woot. Now, um, go ahead and drop your social too, because you you do a, you do a, um, Instagram TV, you do I do IG live. So go ahead and drop that. Yes. So you guys can find me at APY Blog 
on everything. It's APY blog on Instagram. I do do makeup and therapy chats live with different women. Sometimes I just do lives in general to talk about mental health with different people. Um, me and my husband, we have a podcast, a &J podcast, and we're going to be going live regularly now, um, once a month to bring you guys content since it went so well <laughs> last time. Um, and it's APY blog on Twitter. It's APY blog on Facebook as well. Awesome. Sauce. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking some time out. Thank you for sharing your story and oh, you know, like yeah. I'm here to help and support. So, um, if for those of you guys who are watching, um, we will actually have um, images and different, um, more information about um, Alicia and her business and her blog up on the Um a little bit later today. Um, make sure you guys tune in next Thursday. Um, we have another guest, also in beauty. Ooh. Right? Um, and so, you know, for us, it's like, you know, plus size women are more than just clothes. You know, let's talk yeah. about like the different dynamics that we are, that we, you know, our lifestyles. So make sure you guys tune in Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon Eastern Standard Time, 9 a.m. Um, and then you can always catch the replay. Um, we will catch you. Thank you so much again for joining us. I'm Marie Denae, the creator of The Curvy Fashionista. And thank you so much, Alicia, for joining us. Thank you for sharing thank your you. story. And we'll catch you guys next, next Thursday. Bye. Thank you, guys.